So just a few days ago, I was on the train headed back from Meridian. Just a few days ago, the Amtrak train. And there was a man on the train, much older man, and I could tell he was in trouble because he was, he was incredibly thinned out and he had one of those, you know, one of those manila envelopes, you know, the kind that they put x-rays in. And on it was written some name of some, some small hospital in Vermont. And he was seated right across from me and he was biting his knuckles the whole time and he just, he just looked really scared. And there was a woman too, also on the same train. And I helped her carry her bags to the last car, which was actually going to Alexandria, Virginia. And, you know, I helped her because the bag was super heavy and there was no way she could have carried it on her own. So I guess, I guess a train is just a place you find men and women who need help. Don't know who they are, where they come from, what they do, what they're like. But I think what happens is that they're vulnerable on a train. I think it makes you think better of them. It makes you think, you know what, I actually think there are decent people in this country. And I say that at home in New York. And I have to laugh. I say that to my boyfriend at dinner. He paints and I say, you know, I think there are actually decent people here. And he smirks. And I say, no, no, really, we're just, we're drowning in pesto in the city. We're drowning in our own smugness. And he stops me and he, he says, are you saying that my, that my art is rarefied? And I say, no, you are not actually listening to me we sit around and we make fun of other people's values but there are other values i mean certain things they mean something to certain people and okay fine sure we want to be left alone to live our lives but i mean i can certainly understand why a cross marinated in urine might why it might cause anguish to certain people and to sit around and make fun of the people who would be anguished by that feels, well, it feels incredibly narrow-minded. Small. And again, he doesn't say anything. No, actually he says, Martha, you want to know what your problem is? Your problem is that you have a daddy fixation. You are just like every other Catholic girl from Mineola. You just want to do the right thing. This time I don't say anything. And he goes on and he says, he says, Martha, you are disfiguringly conventional. You know, sometimes I go to dinner with my boyfriend and his friends and we go to that place for it, you know, in the packing district and I just want to scream because I feel so incredibly out of touch. There are other values I want to say to them, besides, I don't know, aesthetics. I just, I just think that when you're, when you're moving, when you're traveling in this country, you can help people with their bags and buy them a cup of coffee when they're scared and you can, can watch the fall colors go by outside your window and you do not you have to make any of those decisions about what to believe in.